And there I was. I was the girl from Suits. This one's wife on the Easter egg hunt. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Some of you may have spent yesterday shoveling chocolate into your mouths as you demolished one or more Easter eggs. It might be the case that you attended church because Easter is of particular religious significance to you. Or it may be the case that you and your crotch goblins were running around a garden or a park somewhere hunting Easter eggs. For some of you, you may have just decided to go away for the weekend somewhere enjoying a break, and for others, you may have been working. But whatever you were doing, I should imagine you weren't engaging in ensuring that the world all knew about what you had been doing at Easter, unlike this one's wife. As you know, there is a range of supine publications, notably People.com, sometimes the Daily Mirror. Tatler, Cosmopolitan, Marie Claire, Harper's Bazaar, OK, Hello, and this time it has fallen to town and country to ensure that the world remains up to date with the things that this one's wife does. Emily Barak writes, how Prince Harry and this one's wife celebrate Easter in California. Aha, uh -huh, you may say. I haven't seen anything about this HG. They seem to have been keeping a low profile over the course of the Easter break. I was not furnished with the latest shenanigans of the dubious duo, the gruesome twosome. What were they up to this time? Did this one's wife have Harry dress up as the Easter Bunny and pursue him around the many acres of Monty Shitshow Mansion, pursuing him with an electric cattle prod? Was it the case that she was scurrying amongst the bushes, hunting for Fabergé eggs, snaffling them herself in order to sell them off as part of her beige range on American Riviera Orchard? Well, the article that has appeared only the other day in Town and Country tells us, With Easter, while many British royals, including King Charles, will be attending church in Windsor, Prince Harry and this one's wife will be likely celebrating with their family at home in California. Yes, file this under things that may happen or may not happen. As we were treated to yesterday, the necessity of being told the things that this one's wife has not done, now we're being told about things that she will likely do, but there's no certainty about it whatsoever. That is how desperate this woman is for you to read about her. This is how desperate this woman is to remain in the news that she remains an individual that is spoken about because of her thirst for fuel. Town and Country tell us their Netflix docuseries, Harry and This One's Wife, offered a sweet glimpse into their Easter traditions. Hmm, what might those traditions be? Wedging a cream egg up the derriere of Harry whilst he chants some kind of song? In the sixth episode, cameras capture the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, along with this one's wife's mum, Doria, as they set up an Easter egg hunt for Archie in April 2021. Yes. Once again, the Duchess of Irrelevance ensures that we're treated to information about what she did three years ago. Fascinating, isn't it? But yet there's more of bringing up the past to control the now. Town and Country reports that this one's wife said, We should put them in separate little bags so we can divide and conquer. It's unclear when she said this if she was making reference to Harry's pink pods or whether she was referring to the Easter eggs. Oh, have we decided what the course is going to be? Harry asks. The two then discuss where to plant the Easter eggs and soon venture out to put their plan into action. 
Fucking fascinating, I'm sure you'll agree. These are two dull individuals. There used to be mild interest surrounding Harry because he's a prince of the realm. Well, not everybody knows a prince of the realm. This one's wife is industrial beige. But why we need to know about their activities around Easter, well, we don't. Furthermore, we certainly don't need to be reminded of things that they did three years ago. They're hardly, they're hardly momentous, are they? Two individuals, one a grasping narcissist, the other a dimwit, talking about the course and putting the eggs in separate little bags so that they can divide and conquer. Absolutely fucking insightful. Town and country don't give up yet on bringing up the past, though. They tell us, they then begin walking around their home, planting plastic eggs under very cute animal cards from the world of Beatrix Potter's Peter Rabbit. The decorations Harry and this one's wife use appear to be Mary Mary's Peter Rabbit's and Friends Egg Hunt kit. So, quick plug for that there, and we even spy some of their stickers in Archie's Easter basket. Three years later, they're still available to shop on Amazon or on Merry Mary's site. So at the time, if you were interested in joining in the, with the Sussexes egg hunt, you could do so. As the brand describes, Peter Rabbit and his charming friends are perfect to lead little ones on a very special Easter egg hunt. This set features six character cards, including Peter, Benjamin Bunny, Jemima Puddle Duck, Tom Kitten, and Mrs. Tittlemouse. It also includes six etched wooden stakes with fun phrases to guide them to the candy treasures. The article then treats us to various pictures, showing first of all the Sussexes in the house as they are organising for the decorations. Harry does look a little bit perplexed at what he's doing. I think he's holding a pair of scissors. Who on earth allowed him sharp implements? That's really a breach of protocol, I would suggest. Then they're seen in the garden. Of course, this one's wife is wandering around wearing a stupid hat because she believes that it somehow makes her look more attractive. Harry also appears to be barefoot, the smelly bastard. He really doesn't need to wash the soles of his feet. So there they are outside, and the pictures detail Harry placing an egg next to Peter Rabbit or Benjamin Bunny, who can't quite tell which one it is. And then Jemima Puddle Duck is guarding an egg very very exciting but the point is of course this was an event that took place three years ago and now being regurgitated through another of the supine publications because it's easter rather than remain quiet rather than embrace the privacy that she has always maintained that they've wanted she has to ensure through these pr puff pieces that she's spoken about with this vacuous article that is three years old Naturally, I bring this to your attention to demonstrate the regularity with which she does this, a typical narcissistic trait of bringing up the past to control the now. Often the bringing up the past is in the context of something that you've done, that the narcissist will throw your behaviour in the past in your face. After all, the narcissist never buries anything dead. But in this instance, what this one's wife ensures happens is that things that they have done in the past you're reminded of, irrespective of the fact that they're not particularly interesting, irrespective of the fact that they're not momentous in nature, and also that they're things that millions of other people do around the globe and therefore aren't particularly unique or interesting. But remember, in the world of this one's wife, everything that she does has to be reported on and made to appear as scintillating as she believes it to be. They were hunting for Easter eggs from three years ago, and now your life is all the richer for being reminded of that. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.